Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kevin the Skull Anderson, and welcome to the world premiere of a brand new web series on YouTube. This is called, very simply, and this is named after one of my collections on DeviantArt, Reaching Out to the Unfamous. This is basically my attempt to reach out to as many unsung artists as humanly possible so that all of you can see the work that I see and the potential that I see in them. Let's get started, shall we? This is one of the people who inspire me to create intense and surreal art that would otherwise be called postmodernist abstract in most cases. This is a DeviantArt user named Katish Chan with a hyphen in between the Katish and the Chan. Her real name is Ekaterina. She is a woman from Russia who has made it her life's work to create the best work she can for more than five years. Her art is undoubtedly one of the most thought-provoking galleries of art that I've come across in a long time. You see all this stuff that she's done? That's her life's work, rolled into one right there. Her life's work. And especially this one, the one that I recently fade. This was one that she did. She clearly put her heart and soul into it. It's a digital com it's a digital composition. It's part of her Huvember project. And it features a woman who is leaping into the light. I basically consider it to be some sort of a spiritual message as the woman portrayed is experiencing a spiritual awakening. And I believe it because I consider myself to be in her shoes in that regard, specifically the woman portrayed in this picture. And that's pretty much that now, isn't it? And here's the thing. She has many interests. She has many interests. Her favorite movies are Drive, Millennium Actress, and Pacific Rim, all of which are actually really, really good movies. Her favorite bands, her favorite musical artists, Nero's Day at Disneyland, Caravan Palace, Bonaparte, and System of a Down. System of Down is also one of my favorite bands too because I listened to them growing up and I could relate to their music more than a lot of things. Her favorite books, of course, range from books from Aaron Welsh and Victor Pelevin, who I believe are Russian authors. So, yeah, absolutely. Nothing says national pride like considering your favorite artists to be from the country in which you live. And you know what? I absolutely understand that. Absolutely understood. And she also has a few favorite games. She likes Skyrim. She likes Ozul. She likes Portals 1 and 2. And a couple of other things. And let me just say right now, when I got this note from her today, and and I'm just gonna I'm gonna read it to you. I got this note from her today, and she thanked me for everything that I did to allow her to motivate herself to keep doing this. She was at an awful crisis. She had wanted to drop all her paintings into a trash can. And there I was, right there. I saw her work, and I changed everything. And she, she, even, she even 
complimented me in such a way, and I'll never forget this. She said that I helped her more than all of her friends. And in almost every single way, she's right. I have helped her a lot. And I try to help out with everyone, you know? And it just goes to show that anyone with even a third grader's artistic ability can allow themselves to think like God so that they can transcend art and create something that completely transcends all life. And you know what? That's not the case for her because she was born with these talents. She was given by God these very talents which were bestowed upon her upon her being born. And many years she has spent perfecting these talents, these artistic talents. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example, this, this one picture. This one picture entitled Rosemary. This picture really, really speaks to me. It speaks to me a lot. And I'm also gonna say straight up that this is one of the most strikingly attention-grabbing pictures that I have seen for quite a while. And, and I just looked at this. I just looked at this not a couple of seconds ago. You saw it for yourselves. But this picture has such a deep meaning to it, such a deep meaning that anyone can relate to it, even though few would actually want to believe it. And it's, it's so funny to me because pictures like this are what fuels creativity. It's what fuels the lifeblood of the human race. And this woman, this Russian woman, Katish Chan, she creates absolutely gorgeous, stunning works of art simply because she allows herself to, because she was born with this ability and she uses these abilities to channel her inner Leonardo da Vinci, her Vincent van Gogh, her, um, her, her Claude Monet, you know, to unleash the true artist in her. But I mean, that just goes to show, do you get it now? There are lots of other artists out there who are desperate, who have been working tooth and nail and hammer and bone to get the recognition that they are entitled to. And I'm not sure that I'm saying this right, but I'm just gonna say it. There is no such thing as a bad artist. There's no such thing. And I know this because it's true. It's absolutely true. No such thing as a bad artist. In fact, anything in this day and age can be considered art. I mean, 600 years ago, the only kind of art that you'd see is either an architectural design or an oil on canvas. Now, it can be anything. It can be a screenshot. It can be a capture on TV. It could be a photograph of an inanimate still frame object. It could be anything. It could even be you crapping out something into your toilet and then taking a picture of it. Anything can be considered art. I mean, do you get it? And that's why I say that by my reaching out to the unfamous, they will be able to get the recognition that they've been searching their whole lives for. And it's not just something I struggle with, it's their struggle too. So their struggle is my struggle, and my struggle is their struggle. So until next time, this has been Kevin the Skull Anderson, and I will see you on the next one.
Goodbye. Good night. I'll see you in cyberspace. And do what you can to support me anyway. Of course, you don't have to pay me anything. I do these videos for free, you know, with my smartphone. But whatever you think of my videos is okay with me. I'm not going to hold it against you if you hate me. I'll appreciate it, though, if you can give me some positive feedback. I don't even expect this video to get even three likes. Yeah, but that's it. Have a good day. It's crazy 
Oh, she's completely genius at what she does. Charged. She's unique. She's talented. She's got that it factor. It's everything that you're looking for in an artist like that, and then some. Which, in my mind, says a lot. And what's also important is the fact that she's also a very talented sketcher as well. As far as I know, she's one of those people that does live streams, as far as I can see. But then again, what would I know, right? Here's just another one of her works, her Wake Up Doodle from, from the 1st of June or perhaps maybe the 6th of January, depending on what time zone you're in. I mean, it could be January 6th or it could be June 1st. But I'm going to go with the latter and say June 1st. But this is her doodle from that day, 2015, roughly, two and a half years ago. And judging based on what I see in this piece, it is totally remarkable in almost any sense, despite maybe a couple flaws, which I'm pretty sure were intentional, to show that you don't necessarily have to be perfect in any professional sense, or every professional sense, or whatever sense, in order to make astounding art. But aside from that, this is very, very well drawn. I really like this. And I also like this fan art that she did of Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which, by the way, I'm not sure who created this series, but I do know that it was 30 years ago when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles did I say curls? Teenage Mutant Ninja Curls. Uh, let that sink in your head for a minute. But the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been very, very immensely popular since practically 1986 or 7. So about 31 or 32 years, basically. And this one is remarkable and totally top notch. And this was written three. This was this was a fan art that was drawn three years ago, ironically. And this was one of her earliest drawings, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it was somewhere in the middle of her art career. I'm not sure, but I will say wholeheartedly, and given how professionally drawn this was, this is in fact one of her crowning achievements that, in my mind, put her on the main stage as far as artists are concerned. And I would also like to point out that this is also one of her best works as a whole, in general. I mean, everything else under the sun, you know? It's crazy. It's, it's crazy what she does in her art. She makes it all personally stand out not just in life, but from a professional perspective, and it's so, it's so astounding to me how talented she is. It's very astounding. And I know that I'm not usually the one to kiss people's behinds or whatever, but in this case, let's just say that we'll make an exception to that. And let's also point out the fact that this is one of the most talented artists out there that I personally can think of, right up there with other notable artists within the art community, such as Beck Keith, also known by her DeviantArt username Sparacon, which is also the name of her comic book website that she and her husband Rick Fortner had been running since about 2008 or 9. But that site's been on hold for some reason because Beck Keith is working on a novelization of her comic book that she and Rick work on called A Lunatic's Tale, which I'll get to that in a future episode. But back to Erin Lee. She is the kind of artist that, in all seriousness, has a special style about her that's not only exquisite and not only extraordinary, but something that takes a lot of guts and glory to go about. And let me tell you, this this isn't even the tip of the iceberg, because believe it or not, her earliest works, as far as I can tell, were from 
way back when, and we all know that despite not being as mature as her current works, they still retain that sense of originality to them that makes them completely unique in their own special way. And that tells me, at least in my mind, that she's got it, legitimately and figuratively. She's got it. Absolutely, she's got it. And there's, there's no question about it, you know, just, just, just look at her DeviantArt page. ArayRimLee.DeviantArt.com But don't forget to put the HTTPS and then the colon and then two slashes in there. I'm not sure if they're backslashes or what, but I know that they're slashes nonetheless. But she has been on DeviantArt since early 2013. I'm not going to say what day specifically because I don't want to give any spoilers, but she's been on DeviantArt for around that period of time. And her style has become so incredible and yet at the same time so surreal and abstract that it kind of makes you wonder who inspired her to begin with. Perhaps people that I know personally, like like her doodle of sardonyx from Steven Universe. Not only does sardonyx look absolutely smexy as far as her character design goes, but she pretty much looks like what a typical female symphonic dirigent should look like in a concert hall when performing live from an audience, except except uh, Sardonyx is wearing panties, and that's not necessarily constant appropriate. I think a dress would be more suitable, but yeah, just, just a simple mini skirt or a skirt in general, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, stuff like that, right? I mean, even pants, pants, no, I mean, they work on a man just as much as they do a woman, so it just makes sense. But yeah, this is this is one of her best works in my opinion. That that doodle from the morning of January the 21st, about 51 weeks ago, to the best of my knowledge. So that was about 364 days ago, by my count. Or it could have been 365 since last year was a 366-day calendar. So. It just makes sense either way. So, but anyway, all these artworks that I'm featuring in this video are pretty much just fan art or original art that she herself created as it pertains to books like, you know, um, I would say, Steven Universe, which is a Cartoon Network series created by Rebecca Sugar, I believe, and TMNT, who I still, as of now, don't really know or remember exactly from photographic memory who created it, but there's this one picture and material in particular that I think served as her first submission from March of 2013. Keep in mind that I submitted my first deviation about 13 months after I became a member of the site under my current DeviantArt username because the original username that I had used, I logged into officially and signed up for five days before making the current one that I'm active on, and needless to say, it goes without saying that this undoubtedly is one of her best works, you know, because it's a fan art of Kantan no Shiki Shia, which is, from what I can tell, probably a Japanese anime or manga or whatever, or, you know, or a manga of some kind, because that's how the Japanese prefer to call mangas, mangas, so, yeah, it just makes sense, 
makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I mean, you tell me. What's good? But anyway, that's pretty much going to do it for you, you know? And other than that, I think personally that you should check out her artwork because it's absolutely ridiculous. And I mean that in the best way possible. Let me tell you how good it is. Not, not only is it good, it's a special kind of good. The kind of good that you can't get in many other places except on DeviantArt or, or Tumblr or YouTube or other sorts of places of that nature. And it goes without saying that Ari Rin Lee is very much an artist that I personally think needs more recognition and fame because her DeviantArt page only has, to the best of my knowledge, about 10,000 views, a little over 10,000 views. So I'm just going to tell you straight up, I encourage all of you people on YouTube and social media to check her work out and give her some constructive feedback or criticism about it. But be nice to her, please, because she has worked too hard for too long, and she deserves honest feedback, because that's what she needs. And besides that, I wish you all a you, and I also wish you all a very happy rest of your holiday season. Episode 3 of Reaching Out to the Unfamous is coming soon, so be sure to check that out. Laters! Hey, hey! Welcome to Reaching Out to the Unfamous. Today I wish to present to you a man whose talent continually goes unrecognized. His name is Tomas de la Morty. Actually, his name is Tomas de la Morty, but you are the king of the world. Suffering from permanent blindness never slowed him down any. In reality, it's only made him stronger over time. By seeing from within, Thomas has become one of God's visual translators, ascending this so-called society of contradictions and double standards in ways most of us never could. You damn right! Damn skippy there, man! Damn skippy! In truth, he has allowed himself to see through the eyes of God, our creator and ultimate destroyer, through his many visual artistic mediums and forms. With an open mind and heavy heart, he has led himself to strengthening and healing. With an open mind and heavy heart, he has led himself to strengthening and healing. Reality has led him to salvation. Awareness has led Tomas to transcendence.
position has led him to godliness. Insight has led him to spirituality. has freed him. some of his works. He has a special kind of talent that came to him specifically and only by God. And most important of all, he has this special it factor that everybody looks for in an artist when they look at his artwork. And that, in my mind, tells me a lot. I mean, just, just look at all his stuff. If you look at his whole gallery, you will find that there isn't one art composition in his gallery that isn't breathtaking or astounding in its own right. And I've seen it, so it's got to be believed, it's got to be true, right? Right. I mean, it's just that simple. Who the fuck is that?
it's also fair enough to say that there's also a YouTube video of his that he promotes specifically on his page. Let's go check that out, shall we? Now, now I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. This guy has a YouTube channel? How does he have a YouTube channel? Well, it's simple. Everybody has a YouTube channel. how he made one of his latest sculptures. I mean, it's unbelievable what he's capable of. It really is. It's, it's astonishing to me. It really is. And I can tell you that wholeheartedly because I know it to be true. Just ask Tomas Del Monte, you know? He knows that more than anybody. That anybody, regardless of what they suffer from, regardless of what ails them, Yeah, but other than that, that's all I gotta say. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, you can see me on Cyberspace in all my social media outlets. So, until then, this is Kevin the Skull Anderson signing off for now, and you can reach me on DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Gmail, Google Plus, Blogger. Bang on drunk and 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 Check it out. Later. Oh my god. Rated TVP 2 for people power. So, today's episode is focused on four people whose art I've really come to admire and appreciate more than pretty much almost anyone else in ways that people would never understand. And, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing, hear me out, hear me out. There's this person named Beck Key, real name. been a deviant artist for nearly 15 years now. This year would be her 15th year. And she's got a gallery full of art that is literally that good. And, and I don't just say this to say it. I say this because it's true. 100%. Great A quality. And, 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 and let, me, let me tell you people I'm gonna tell you people something. So, bottom line is this. Over the last 15 years, she has perfected her style in such a way that it's almost as if she's overcome her colorblindness. And you know, I say that she's colorblind because, well, she was diagnosed with it at such and such an age, and of course, nobody knows why, but that hasn't stopped her any. That hasn't slowed her down any. And you know what? Truthfully, I admire that a lot about her. And this particular, how you say, 
gallery is so intense and so rich with humoristic dark comedy and blunt honesty that it's almost as if, well, she's developed her own style, and rightfully so, you know? Because the rest, as they say, that's history. And she even makes blushes, she makes artists and crafts and stuff. She's, she even did a few redesigns of a few of her characters. And I'm, I'm going to show you these redesigns right now. And, well, this is, well, here we go. This, I know for sure, is undisputedly a couple. Now, now, check this out, check this out. You're not going to believe this. You're not going to believe this. That's her character, Clint Dart. He got a pretty cool redesign after nearly a decade or so. This is another one of her characters from the music's tale, Mia, and her design is much different from, say, 10 years ago. This is her new design for her character, Polly, also from the music's tale. And then, of course, the rest of the Mercy Elite, like this, and that, and that, and that, and so on. And this is, of course, one of the villains in a Dick's Tale, Lynch. He's one of the crews, supposedly one of the only three crews left in existence, supposedly. And God knows why, but I don't care much about And this is, of course, Malcolm Quimby. He's the teenage king who became king after his father died when Malcolm himself was only five can see how much it's taken a toll on him. Now, this is of course another character she redesigned named Troy. She's also he's also a part of the Mercy Elite. And, and check this out. Check this out. Since then she sporadically submitted deviations to her gallery, but each time she does, her art gets better and better and better and better. And I'm just going to say that right now. And her husband, of course, is Richard Fortner, otherwise known by his name, King Rick on TV. You know? And, and let me just say this. Let me say this. Okay? Let me point out here. This guy, he might not be able to draw past the stick figures or whatever, but this guy is an amazingly talented guy. He's got a YouTube channel based on his gaming sessions called Timed Hits. And you know what's funny? What's funny is that his YouTube channel also features a few of his friends, and this guy, you know, he might not be able to draw that stick figures, but his art style is so unique that it needs no explanation, because it's literally that original. He's got a special style about him, you know, and, and I'm just being truthful about it, I can't lie to people. The guy's a good person, he's a great artist too. Especially when it comes to his gaming sessions. And there's this one that I liked most of all on this time to his YouTube channel. And it was about his run through of the S NES version of I think it was Newton's Acme Animation Factory or whatever. But yeah. I mean not that it means anything. You know, and and let me just let me just say, let me just say, this guy, he's got it, undisputed. He's got it, no question, no doubt. And and, and check this out, check this. Out. This is good. This is, look at the humor. 
Boomer behind this. This is so awesome. Oh, look, he's got photography. That's great. I like his photography, too. Very good pictures that he takes. And I remember him doing a selfie once. I don't know exactly where that is, but if I could guess, per se, if I could just guess what one of the selfies would look like, it would look something like, say, this. I'm telling you, though, seriously, that, that's a good selfie. That is legit. Truly legit. And, and another one of his selfies. And, and this guy, he's got a really, really good sense of humor. So good, in fact, you might even say he's well ahead of his time, like Seth MacFarlane and Matt Raymond. You know? But that's one thing, isn't it? That's one thing, right? And, and check this out. Another one of their friends from the Spirit Crew, as I call them. This, of course, is... Rebecca Burgess. They call her Bex because she's from England. But she is primarily responsible, I think, in the coloring department or is it the line art department for this webcomic called Headcase. And this particular comic is absolutely mind-boggling to me. It's a it's a perfect accurate it's a perfect accurate re representation of life through my eyes in, in ways that I might have never even imagined. And she has a really unique gallery of her own. And it's it's crazy because I mean, I mean, check this out. Check this out. Look at her art. This is what I'd like to call true unfiltered genius. And and I like this this picture of hers where she draws Mozart, you know, directing one of his one of his own symphonies and stuff. But to me, this is one of the best works, undisputedly, without question. And, and, of course, here's another one of her artworks. And, this is also a fan art of this, this guy. And, she's extremely talented at what she does. Extremely. There's, there's no other way to say it. She's just that good. She's that good. And here's another fan art of hers. Another fan art. Right here. Oh, by the way, Mozart recently turned how old? Because, you know, I think he was born in, say, 1762, I think. So that would make him 200 and. 56 years old today, 255-ish, ah, what the hell would I know, but the point is, the point is actually simple enough, this particular artist, she's got a style of her own, and yet it completely relates to the life stories of people like, say, myself. And there's another guy who's also a part of this Rivera group. His name is Nicholas Meyer. He goes by the name Nick Meyer. And his DeviantArt username is Holy Lancer 9 with a capital H. And this guy hasn't necessarily made much artwork for his. Comic, but 
that's only in the last couple of years, because this guy, let me tell you, he might have been on some sort of extended hiatus for whatever reason, but this guy, he's got it. This guy is a special talent of his own, and he's also one of the four people, the other three I just mentioned earlier in this video, who inspired me to create my own comic book entitled Confessions of a Sociopath. And it, it's so good that they're, they're so talented and they're such an inspiration to me that I even decided upon coming up with a new suggested logo for them for their Severicon website way back in, say, 2000. Yeah, 2013. And I have an art style of my own. I, I used to be a very, very, very top-notch traditional artist. Until, of course, I turned to digital art. And then, of course, the rest, as they say, is history. And then look back at the art. This is how good my traditional art was back then. This is how good my digital art is now. Take a look at this, huh? Take a look at this. And I even do photo manipulations too, like like this like this parody of Squidward's bathroom session being interrupted. Look at that! <laughs> oh my god, man! What is that? What is that? But anyway, that's that's pretty much it. So if you like what I do. Don't hesitate to subscribe to any of my channels online, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, plus a Gmail, a Tumblr, and Instagram. I'm all over the map! So until next time, you take care of yourselves. And Terry's bring a reference. People, I'm gonna tell you like it is. There's this artist whose username is Real Ambush Bruisier, or Real Ambush Bruisier, or whatever you want to call it. But this guy, he has what I'd like to call a unique art style that would otherwise be considered unique. Okay, I scratched that back. She has a unique art style that would generally be considered unique. Now, that being said, she's only been on DeviantArt for a little under a week now, but her art style is already incredibly impressive. Which says a lot. And let's let's just take a look at all of these. You know, one by one, right? Let's take a look at all of these. All three of these, specifically, one by one. Right? So here's the first one. It's... The first one, of course, was a digital art entry for a challenge that she was working on. And let me just say right now, this stuff that she came up with in, in, in this first drawing of hers, this is really unique. I like it. A lot. Which says a lot. Now doesn't it? And I'm, I'm telling you now, straight up, she's got it. 
right then and there she's got it. She has a special style about her in her art style, her technique in drawing, coming up with stuff and whatever. Even the background looks amazing. You know, the, the vintage effect. That's cool too, you know? And come to think of it, let's go to this, this sketch that she did. This is the second one. This is a character named Chernobyl, who's named after the nuclear disaster of the same name that happened some three decades before. And this drawing looks very, very neatly drawn. You know? Kind of like the stuff that I drew back when I was in Art Fundamentals, when I was still a community college student. I'm not anymore, but... The reason why I don't go to school anymore is simple enough. Because I don't need it. You don't need to go to school to major in things that you're already a master at. Because it's just not needed. But back to the point. This, this sketch that she made of Chernobyl... This is quite impressive. This is this is literally grade A astounding. With a couple of exclamation marks at the end. But let me just point out the anatomy in this picture, although it's not the best as she's only been a deviant for a little under a week, it still shows that she has got it. She's literally got that it factor about her that not many artists who have been on for as short and short a time as she has have. She's got that distinct capability and I can see it in this picture. No doubt about it. I mean, there's just no question. And, and let's, let's take a look at this last yeah. one. This most recent one that she submitted. Oh. Let's take a look at this picture that she made of what appears to be, you know, I mean, this is, this is another digital art, apparently, a fan art of a character named Dino, or as he's referred to, Mirage, or whatever, it it but must be right. this particular we know it fan art drawing this is just, for someone that's been on DeviantArt for about three or four days, this is just completely virtuosic. It's the kind of stuff that you'd expect a modern day Leonardo da Vinci to draw on a computer. So this is... And that's saying a lot, because this stuff is completely, entirely, bafflingly good. It's great. And you know, she's got a, she's got a black background. So you know it has some kind of background to it. Which, as a whole, says a lot, because, I mean, I asked her yesterday in a note if she wanted me to feature her gallery on what would be this particular episode of reaching out to the unfamous this would be number five I believe and she said sure it would be an honor which is basically what she said I, I can't really think about off the top of my head what she said exactly but basically, she liked the idea so much that she just thought, Okay, let's go for it. I'm all for it. If you're in, then I'm in. But back to the point. This latest drawing of hers, this is top-notch. 
For someone that's been on DeviantArt for about three or four days, this is the coup de grace of what every professional artist would look for in an up and comer's work. And I'm a professional artist, but yet, after all these years, I still draw like I'm 10 years old, but the thing is, I'm not 10 years old anymore. <laughs> but I still draw like a 10 year old, so. Yeah. I can't say that my own art style hasn't improved. Because that would be a lie. Of course, it's improved, but in its own way. Meanwhile, this. Between this picture. This sketch. And her first digital drawing that she submitted here just based on these three drawings from this one to the last one that she submitted most recently she's already made a magnificent incredible unbelievable improvement and it just I mean, this just, this blows my mind. I've never seen anyone who's been able to submit three drawings submitted within three or four days following said Deviant's own membership into this, into this art site. With each one looking more and more astounding and astonishing than the last one. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't even know what to say, man. This is just completely top notch. You're not going to get this in many other places, people. Let me tell you. You will not get this in many other places. Oh, by the way. By the way. I should point out. Let me just tell you something. In sight, it must be to right. the artist who I'm featuring in this Ratu. particular episode of Ratu, you're absolutely welcome. Absolutely. Infinitely many times over. And. I remember telling her straight up that I would start working on it tomorrow, which was last night, today, you know? Because last night I told her I'd start working on it tomorrow, which apparently is today. But, I mean, you get it, right? You get the idea. But just... But seriously, though, take... Huh? So... I mistaken real ambush bruisier for the artist that I actually want to refer to as Warrior Art and OCs. And apparently this this is the person I'm referring to. Apparently I mixed different deviants up, which is which is pretty easy to do since I have so many watchers and I watch so many people and all this and whatever, but let, let me just put it like this. Her name is Kat Anderson, she shares my last name, and she has been a deviant right. for we know it too. about two weeks, for about two months and a week. And she's got 105 deviations submitted over two months, and just the two months and a week that she's been here. And each one is actually pretty good, you know? But the other one that I was referring to, Real Ambush Bruisier, she hails from Canada, which is in North America, whereas Kat Anderson, she resides in, of course, America, United States, but this is the gallery that I actually meant to, to show you guys, but the other one 
that I featured before I got to this one, that counts too, so I'm featuring that one as well. So, but let's, let's take a look at her stuff. Let's take a look at her stuff. So, this, this drawing, you know, this is truly remarkable for a first drawing. Let me tell you, it's remarkable. It's a special kind of special that you just can't get in many other places. And, and check this out. This is a step up from that. She's got her shadow effect completely mastered, it seems, at such a young age. It's just astonishing to me. And, and the poses of these two characters, those are just, they're really, really impressive, I gotta tell you. Yeah. And, and what about this one? Oh. Well, I mean, I mean, not the best sketch that I've seen, but it's still very fantastic, nonetheless. I mean, she's got the anatomy down pat, the horns, the scales, the teeth, the gums, the nose, the tongue, neckline, horns. She's got it all down pat. And let's, let's check this one out. This one is supposedly her first drawing on her computer, which is actually really, really impressive, considering this was her first go around in terms of, say, drawing on a computer. I happen to draw on my computer with a mouse pad. You know, because that, that rectangular thing yeah, but here's another one that she made, Jagged Legs. This one's a pretty good drawing too, I like this one. This one is also pretty good, I like the rainbow color to it, very very nice. Also, there's a strange kind of reference to the Illuminati in here. <laughs> Not that anybody cares, but I mean, it's all good, so I give her the benefit of the yep. doubt. Other than that, though, it's a really, really, really great picture. It's it's, it's just brilliant. And look at this. That's a good picture, too, yeah. See, she reminds me of me when I was younger. When I was in my teenage years. Because I had so many ideas circulating in my mind, I didn't know what to do with them. Then I figured it out. Inside, and this one looks great here. Right. Yeah. And we know it too. This is just this is wonderful. Oh by the way, check out her Gmail, catchingcats at gmail.com. Catching cats is all one word. At that's the at sign. Gmail.com. Go check that out. Please. And and what about this? What about this? This one this one is really, really good. This is completely top-notch. I mean, it's it's not the best, but it's top-notch. And that's saying something since she's only been around for about nine weeks on DeviantArt. And this is, this is a selfie of her, believe it or not. A selfie drawing of her. I like that. Also, I'm a geek as well, so I can relate. Look at this. Look at this. This. This is really, really good. I like this. This is great. Yeah, that looks good too. That's good. That's great. I like the I like the shading right here. The transparent shading right here. That's that is remarkable. And and let's look at this. This one. The shading in this one, quite impressive. I like that. Very impressive. Very remarkable. And now let's let's look at her latest drawings. Let's let's take a look at her latest drawings, okay? How about we just do that? So this is this is the drawing of hers that I faved just yesterday. And she tried a new technique. I'm gonna comment on this and I'm just gonna tell her how I feel about it. 
So, yeah. But yeah, basically, this is her new technique, and it's just, it's very innovative. I like how she's able to scribble all these different things, and yet make them so realistic at the same time, like something out of a real-life, psychedelic-style abstract painting mixed with a side of Art Nouveau and Renaissance-style paintings. This is just... I really like this a lot. This is my favorite one of hers so far. But enough about that. This one, I can clearly see an improvement between her first drawings and this one. Which says a lot, because her first drawings were pretty, pretty good. I liked it. I liked her first drawings a lot. And let's take a look at this one, huh? This one... Wow. His... His overalls look, the bottom of his overalls look like a number three horizontally inverted. Well, at least he has a backpack, so that's good. What's that? Tea kettle on his head? Let's pop the kettle black, man. Yeah. But anyway, that's pretty much it. This is, this is art style that she's shown me through her art. It's really, really good. Especially this one. I like this one. Yeah, but the kinds of... Oh, what about this one? Yeah, that. Now that is genius. Look at all these wires that she managed to draw effortlessly. Very... I'm telling you, that's creative. That's some creative stuff right there. Let me tell you. Yeah. But honestly though, I'm just gonna go about and, and say this. Oh, she has a photograph. Oh, who would have thought? <laughs> Smooth Pelt Smooth Pelt is her cat. She has a cat. That's that's great. That is so awesome. But yeah. But my personal favorites from her gallery would have to be her second drawing, yeah! her eighth drawing, her selfie drawing, yeah, and now that I think about it, her comic, her photograph of her cat, which her original character is based upon. That drawing of an anthropomorphic robot who has wires implanted into him for whatever reason. Glitching out. This one is another personal favorite of mine. And this one too. I mean really, it's just... I'm telling you though, seriously, this is just... This gallery she has is totally, totally impressive. This is the kind of gallery that... I'm telling you, in the, in the nine weeks that she's been on DA, on DeviantArt, she's improved in ways I never even thought were possible. For someone as young as she is. In and fact, I don't know that she's young at all. She, right. she might be... She might be my age. She might be... My younger cousin Stemmons' age. I don't know. But... The point is... She's developed... A unique art style. And over nine... Weeks... She has... 
almost nearly perfected it in such a way that it's almost as if she's become a master at her trade. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Bye for now. Rated TVP two for people power. basically sharing the fame, essentially, is what I'm doing, because I'm giving everybody else a spotlight. I don't really need the spotlight if I can't get it on my own. But here is a deviant named Lily Blossom 505 also known by her real name, her first name is Jordan, of course, and let's just say that she has a very unique art style and a very talented kind of wit about her that makes her very unique as an artist even though she's only been on DA since, I don't know, September 10th, 2016, so the day before the 15th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. So, yeah, she's been on DeviantArt for, over, for almost a year and a half now. Actually, over a year and a half, I should say. Well, I lied. A year and five months and 12 days. But anyway, let's get to it, huh? Let's get to it. So here's what we have here. We have a gallery that is chock full of potential. So full of potential, in fact, it's enough to blow your mind completely out of the wall. And... And here are some people who commented on her gallery. Actually, there's only one person who commented on her gallery. It's it's another person who, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously gonna... You already know who this person is, because the username is right there. <laughs> By the way, let's just, let's get back to the point. Her first artworks were very, very indicative of the art style that she would eventually adopt. And it also goes without saying that she has a very unique kind of talent about her that makes her stand out, for the most part, in ways that most people are probably never going to understand unless of course, they share her talents, and they understand her in the way that I do. But of course, I'm an understanding, I'm an understanding and easygoing person anyway. Um, by the way, don't, don't even worry about my mispronouncing of the word understanding. <laughs> I'm trying to sound like Hitler. Are you? Nah, I'm not gonna say that. But let me just say this. I looked through her gallery. Just like I am now, I find that she's got a really special style about her. A part of it has a few backgrounds of which are based on photographs. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that though, because any background is better than, you know, say, a default, like a transparent one. but. Even with a default background, with a transparent background, I should say, or a white background in general, her art still looks quite impressive, you know? Now, I don't know if she has 
lots of experience in this art thing or not, but she definitely shows that for the most part, in some aspects, she is far beyond her years in terms of wisdom, of understanding. I mean, just 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 look at this first artwork that she did. Let's let's take a look back at her first artwork and see here the first drawing that she made. Of course, the base edit was of course done by another user who she is friends with. Of course, you already know who it is now because you've seen it. You've seen the username, but this was her very first submission submitted on Halloween of 2016. Now, let's take a look at the difference, huh? How about that? Let's take a look at the difference in between October 31st of 2016 and some of her later works, her most recent works, I mean, now. So, from October the 31st, 2016 to now, she went from something like that, mind you, and she turned it into something like this. That's amazing, isn't it? And she mostly taught herself. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, she just taught herself. She knew the art form at its best, and that's that, isn't it? I mean, I think that sums it up perfectly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but Jordan here has got it. She's definitely got that special art style that a person looks for in her, in, in a typical art gallery. I mean, I don't know if... if if there were any suggestions that I could give at this point, maybe maybe Jordan could possibly try photography. Because she's already shown me that she's good at making a photography-based background. But what about actual photograph taking? Like, like, you know, selfies or landscape, landscape shots, you know, from a camera or, or a webcam or whatever. Yeah, I mean... Seriously though, yeah. Also, I'd like to point out that there's a guy on here who was, who's my age, well, I, I was his age 10 years ago, but his, his name, his username is Antipainter14, which, the, the number 14 indicates that, of course, he's a teenager, but this guy, over the last seven some odd months, has come up with quite a unique gallery of almost 200 deviations. I say almost because he's one short, but I'm just going to point out the facts. This guy has been a deviant artist since July the 8th, 2017, so roughly, I would say, seven months. Now this guy is, from my understanding, what I was 10 years ago, so I'm basically looking into my self 10 years ago, and it's almost as if he's looking into the future, you know, but, ah, never mind. Let's just get to the point, right? Let's get to the point. Let's get straight to it. Right. So, his first, you know, his, his first deviation, of course, goes back to about, I would say, late July, possibly mid-July, possibly a bit earlier, a bit later, I mean, I don't know, man. But this guy, let me tell you, he identifies himself under the initial CH. But let me tell you, his first deviation, because, oh, by the way, he's a brony, you know, I know a lot of bronies on DeviantArt. This first particular thing that he did, July, actually on the very first day that he joined, so I guess I was right about it being early in July, 
So this is his first deviation submitted on the very same day that he joined DeviantArt. It actually looks pretty good, honestly, for for someone who 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 who's still very young and has a long life ahead of him and whatnot. But anyway, back to the point. I notice here that just based on his on his gallery and whatnot, he has evolved very neatly in the last seven plus months since joining this site and submitting his first deviation on July the 8th. Of course, this is of course his latest work, a gift for one of his friends, an art gift for one of his friends. And this was submitted almost a day ago to the exact minute. Notice the style, the, the different changes in style between seven months ago and now. And I'm, I'm just going to say it. This guy has that it factor. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. I mean, there's no question. For someone who is 14 years old and has a long, long life ahead of him, this guy draws legitimately like a boss. And I can say that certainly because I know it for sure. Because I know good art when I see it. Especially if it's shaded in this in this form, in this fashion. You know, look, look at the shades right there. And... I'm serious though, this guy is just, it's mind blowing how talented this guy is. And I, I know that he might be using a couple bases here and there to, to come up with his work, and that's completely understandable. I don't mind that a bit, you know? But I guess that's what makes him so unique as an artist. Because you know, in my mind, there's no such thing as a bad artist. You know? No such thing. Come to think of it. Yeah, um. Anyways, let's just. Let's point out the facts. This guy. His art style is wonderful. He's got a special kind of whimsicality about his style. His art technique is quite unique. He's got that kind of flair in his art style, and he works with poses quite well, I should say. Very, very, very well. And that's saying a lot, now isn't it? That really is saying a lot. And I can say that certainly, without any question or doubt in my mind. So, oh, look at this. Dragon Ball Z reference. Yeah. You know, I could... Just imagine, just just imagine for once, someone going full on Super Saiyan God on you. I mean, could you imagine that? I know this because I've been a, I've been a Dragon Ball Z fan for as long as I can remember, save for the few years that I got out of the fandom because all this stuff happened in my life, but. But this is just incredible. Look at this. I mean, I get that's a white background, but, but look at this. The sheer geniusness of the way in which this was made. You know, the, the sparkles, the facial expression, the pose. Seriously, though, this is good. This really is good. Absolutely. Oh, oh my god, look at that. <laughs> Power up emoji for the win. Anyway, that's gonna do it. And with that, I conclude this episode of Reaching Out. And I encourage all of you to stay tuned, because there's gonna be more in the future. And with that, until next time, I'll see you in cyberspace. Good night, God bless, and get the hell out.
Hello, all you guys. It's your scoly friend here, back with another episode of Reaching Out. And I'm going to feature some really good artists today, which you all personally can relate to. And I know you can relate to them because you've seen them before through their art. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? I mean, not that it matters, but nothing's really going to make sense from here soon. So, DeviantArt user LittleInvisible001 has been a Deviant artist for about five years. And let me tell you now, this was one of her first works, originally submitted in around late September to early October of 2013, and I will be personally honest with you, I think that this is a really, really good picture. I mean, clearly, the background is very somewhat flawlessly drawn. I mean, there are a couple of mistakes here and there, but they're not as visible to the naked eye as one might expect. I mean, yeah, this is some pretty good stuff we have here. Especially with the Powerpuff Girls inspired logo. I mean, not that it's inspired by the original Powerpuff Girls logo, but I mean, who cares, right? Also note, hair should flow with the wind's direction. Smiley face. Also notice the letter D. Hmm. Also, if you haven't noticed, her commentary is absolutely perfect. Which says a lot. Also noteworthy is her really amazing photography skills, which obviously bears mentioning here, because considering she took a camera shot of a lion and how well it turned out, I can easily say that she should probably do more of these. So, Little Invisible 001, if you're watching this, you're a really good photographer, and I encourage you to make more photographs pertaining to this nature. I mean, I mean, not that you're going to, of course, you're the one that makes the choices, but I just want to motivate you, you know, because this, this photography shot is obviously really good, and the lion seems really, really happy. I mean, no correlation to Leo, who's the mascot of MGM, but still. Anyhow, people, this is a clear-cut example of what a photograph should be. Full of life, of energy, of happiness and joy. Sure, the quality isn't great in this particular photograph, but this is from March of 2014, and cameras weren't all that efficient back then. Even my first photographs were poorly executed because I started taking photographs in 2013 and apparently I wasn't very experienced at it, but I learned how to perfect that craft over time, just as I can clearly see here, and there's no doubt whatsoever in my mind that Little Invisible 001 is a very intriguing and very extraordinary, I should say, photographer. Another one of the best works, in my opinion, is page two of her comic, Undisguised. Now, let me point out right now that this comic page is done remarkably. It is phenomenally drawn, and it has a lot of capability about it. Also notice the comedy segments in here. You know, Thanks for joining me on my first mission. Nothing. Just just keep walking. And don't thank me. Huh? That slender douche from Nick thank that slender douche for making me calm. Who calls Slender a douche? Ha! <laughs> You're just like the others. What's that supposed to mean? 
Always so loyal to Master Slenderman, eh? Well, excuse me for not being a total dick like you! <laughs> I mean, this is really good. The comedy parts in between are actually really good. I mean, I like this. I like this very much. This is some great A quality stuff. I mean, seriously, this is great. I like how all this is drawn in a dark setting in a forest somewhere. It's great. Totally remarkable. And believe me, I'm not kidding when I say that. I actually. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh! 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 oh wow! This is interesting. This is very interesting. Clearly, she must have been inspired by the Harry Potter franchise created by J.K. Rowling. This is interesting stuff here. Yeah. Also, notice Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, I think, and Slytherin references. I mean, not that it matters, but still. <laughs> this, this is... This is actually really neatly drawn. Also notice her improvement since one of her first drawings that I just reviewed earlier this episode in 2013. This is, this is actually quite an improvement. It's not noticeable to most people, but it's noticeable to me, so I see it for what it is. And it's a vast improvement over time. Oh, I see that! So apparently, this person, Candy McPink, is from Ravenclaw. I thought it was Gryffindor at first, but boy, was I wrong. Well, seeing as though I've come across this one before, I can easily say that this is one of my favorites from her gallery. Now, um, I need to address something here. I need to be completely transparent with you. I made a really, um, awkward comment regarding this picture, and, uh, my friend Little Invisible 001 called me out for it, and of course I apologized. And, you know, I, I repented to God for it too, because of course I had to. And we had a bit of a misunderstanding at first, but eventually it was resolved, and everything was fine from that point onward, and still is. But, I still must say, this is a fantastic picture. I mean, look at the pose here. That's just... This picture in itself is magical. This girl isn't the only person in this picture that's magical. This whole picture is, too, especially the background. The background of choice that she put in here is just perfect and very fitting, you know? So, yeah. Also, Zatanna reference. It's also worth noting at this point in time that there is another artist on DeviantArt that I've come to really admire in terms of art style. That is, of course, I'm talking about Dominoke otherwise known by his real name, Israel Peoples, if I'm not mistaken. I think there is a biography on his comic that, yeah, there it is. But Isaiah Peoples, as he is known by his real identity, is a manga artist that has created this comic called Afro Thunder, which is a manga, essentially. And what we have here is a really nicely drawn manga in the style of, say, Dragon Ball Z meets Yu-Gi-Oh! meets Attack on Titan in a strange twist of events with an added side bonus of historical accuracy. And this is one of the best inspired mangas that I have read, honest to God. 
and would you know it, he copyrighted it. He was able to successfully register a copyright on it. So, that's actually really, really awesome. I can't even do that. Well, my old words. Just yawn. Anyway, let's get to the point. This is a really interesting comic that is not only noteworthy for its very detailed ink style, but also, in general, for its unique, meticulous technique. And this is something that I highly doubt anyone will dislike because in reality it is that good. There's not a single person that you won't know, hardly, when you ask them that will read something like this on DeviantArt and say that they don't like it. What I'm, actually what I mean to say is, hell, everybody's gonna like this, that's basically it. That's just summing it up to the bare bones. Everyone is going to like this for its sheer, inspired style, for its sheer tenacity, its sheer thunder, so to speak, hence part of the manga's name, but basically that's pretty much it. Just as a side note, what you're about to see in this gallery probably and likely might not be suitable for people who are under the age of 18 or people in general who just aren't used to seeing weird stuff, should I say. Anyway, let's just move on already, okay? I ain't got time for this. Holy shite. To quote Steve Carell from The Office, NO! NO! PLEASE! GOD NO! NO! That was a terrible impersonation. Anyway, here's one of the uh, more heavier material that I just warned you about. Now keep in mind, you're probably going to get really weirded out by this. Just take a look. Does that not look weird to you? Then again, apparently weird is the new normal now, so why should it come as any surprise? I mean, I mean, seriously though, man, seriously. Why should it be any surprise to anybody? Because weird is the new normal. It's okay to be weird. You just gotta be weird in private. When you need to be. Also, this is a light, if, if that's even worth mentioning. Also, wow. Okay, that actually looks really, really good. I, I can't argue with that. That looks really nice. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just move on from that. Now that's actually really nicely drawn too. Yeah? Huh. Ah. <laughs> I told you there would be some cringe in this shit! Also, more cringe. Also, furry persona badge. And I'll admit, too, I became a furry, too, when I started my Ashtar Skeleton Heart Flamehammer account on Fur Affinity. I mean, just just go check that out. As a matter of fact, don't, because I'm going to show it to you. In all seriousness, and without any regret whatsoever, I officially became a furry on March the 10th, 2018, when I decided to get an account on Fur Affinity. 
This is my spirit animal, Ashtar Flameham. He is a crossbreed between an Ethiopian wolf and a tiger, or as I like to call him, a wolver. Or a tiger wolf, or whatever. I just call him a wolver for short, because that's essentially what he is. He's an Ethiopian wolf that looks like a tiger. But just thought I'd, I just thought I'd point that out to you, just so you know. Look at this nicely drawn, inspired Sonic the Hedgehog work. I mean, just just look at that. Sonic with his pose, Knuckle with his pose. I think that's well. That's that's a character from Knuckles Chaotix, if I'm if I recall. I think his name is Mighty the Armadillo. Hell, I don't know. But still, this is a really, really decent drawing. I like how this all came together, too. I mean, just, just look at that. All three of these poses are just... They're gold. Absolute gold. Thank you, Domino, okay? Thanks a lot for that. I mean, really, though. I appreciate that, good sir. And that's all I got. So, until next time, I'll see you on social media and cyberspace. Goodbye. TV Hey there, everybody, it's your Scully friend here, back with another video, and I'm gonna reach out to some more unfamous artists right now. You ready for it? Because I sure as hell am. I've got some very good artists for you today, and you're gonna love their artwork. Let's check their art out, shall we? Time to reach out. Let us now enter the artwork of Constellation Dragoho, also known by her first name, Constella. She has been a deviant for a year and has over 350 deviations. Oddly enough, she doesn't think her art is talented, per se, but I say otherwise. She's got a special wit about her art that says that she is unique in her own way, and she's got a special style about her that makes her stand out from quite a few artists that I've seen in my own honest opinion. Her photography is actually really good too, if that tells you anything. And her literature is actually really decent as well. Her screenshots are phenomenal. Her digital paintings and drawings are phenomenal. I mean, you just can't go wrong with stuff like this, you know? There's no way you can go wrong with stuff like this. Seriously. And now let's check out her gallery, shall we? Let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Seriously, though. Alright. Now this is some pretty good artwork, I'm telling you. Her early stuff is actually really interesting to look at. Because if you'll notice, she actually has already developed a very distinct art style and a very unique wit about her art, as I've mentioned before. And like all great artists, she started out traditionally pen and paper and colored utensils, just like myself. I know this because I submitted my first official DeviantArt deviation in January of 2012, which was basically a very, very meticulously drawn traditional pen and paper artwork of my friend Zabaricon's character Lizzie Zink, ironically from A Lunatic's Tale. I still consider that to be my best drawing, and I'll just be honest with you. Just being reasonable, you know? And I have no reason to lie about it. But going back to her art, 
She has a distinct style about her that makes her very, very, very gentle, very original, very genuine. And her art is very intense as well, as far as how it's drawn. And I like that very much. As we further go through her evolution, we see that she, like all great artists, improved quite a bit. In her own way, no less. And, and look up further, mind you. Her art is very... It's just... This is just... This is high caliber art that we're talking about here, folks. You're not gonna get this from for many people outside the Deviant Art community, unless you're on Fur Affinity or, or Tumblr or Facebook or Twitter per se, but this art is totally top notch, and I'll be the first to admit that to you. This is really impressive. Very good. Further going up her art gallery, we see that her art is of course becoming more and more digital, albeit very slowly. And yet, at the same time, we also see that her art is very captivating. Her fan art of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise is very apparent. It's extremely imperative to note that her art becomes more detailed and more meticulous as we go on, and she tries new mediums as a result. Going further art, we know that she becomes a fan of Danny and the Ink Machine, which is actually really interesting as well. And for that, I can admire her art very much. And that says a lot. By the way, to all the people out there who think I'm being sarcastic, guess what? I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just being completely honest about what I'm seeing. And if you can't see it that way, at least try to take it with a pinch of salt. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. She's experimenting with screenshots. This is amazing. Oh man, look at this. And and we look further up her gallery and and we notice that it's becoming a lot more refined, a lot more evolved. This is just truly amazing. Oh man. Look at that. And she's experimenting with literature no less. I love that. Look at that. And, and she even took a picture of the White House. This is brilliant. This is so brilliant. Constella, if you're watching this, understand that you shouldn't shortchange yourself. Because the shots that you're taking, the pictures that you're drawing, the screenshots that you're recording are truly remarkable. And Costella, you know I'm not lying when I say this, because I know a great artist when I see one. And you, Costella, are a fantastic artist. I mean, just, just look at this stuff. Look at this. Look at this. Guys, this is, this is absolute genius. This is genius. Oh, man. And, and look at that. Look at that. Oh, Lord. This is... This is brilliant, man. This is expertly captivating. Expertly captivating. This is this is the kind of stuff you'd see in a museum, people. And as I've said before, I'm not being sarcastic when I say this. I'm being completely honest. This stuff is genuinely original. I love it. This is great. Look at this. Look at all this. Look at all this. This is just wonderful. So delightful to see a very talented artist like her come up with ingenious artworks like this. And she even experiments with comic art too. This is this is even better. This is brilliant. Wow. I mean, you, you can't get any better than that, folks. Nothing is quite as impressive and very amazing as originality in artwork, and Costella here is a definitive example of that. Good job, Costella. Keep making brilliant artwork, because you're absolutely amazing at it. Great work. And now for something I've never really done before, something completely different, mind you. 
I'm going to feature one of my favorite artists on Fur Affinity. Enter the art of Fur Affinity user Lulu. His art is actually pretty interesting. I, I really, I really think you guys will like this stuff. Just, just check it out. You're never going to believe it when you see it. Seriously. So, seeing as though this guy, who just recently turned 29, by the way, I won't tell you when he was born, you can figure that out on your own, but, basically, this guy has hundreds and hundreds of deviations on his fur video account that are really expertly drawn, and very phenomenally at that. I mean, just check out all this stuff. This is just fantastic. This is fantastic, what he does. He's so involved into the furry fandom, as I have been just recently, hence my decision to start a fur affinity page of my own back in mid-March, that this guy literally has all the fixings of a certifiable museum quality artist. This guy's legit. He's absolutely legit. I love every one of his artworks, because he has them all drawn to a T. I mean, this guy, how good can a person be at what he does? I mean, this guy is phenomenal. It's astounding to me how good this guy's art really is. I mean, this is, this is just great. Look at all this stuff. Look at this guy's art. I mean, this, this is beautiful. This artwork is just, it's so... I can't even begin, legitimately, to describe how thrilling his art looks. I mean, this looks like something out of a CGI-based Disney movie. Except the movie isn't as CGI as it is traditionally drawn, meaning in Walt Disney style. But, but dude, this, this is just perfect. Man. I cannot even begin to describe how amazing how how spectacular this this is i mean seriously and i know you guys think that i'm just ass kissing but i'm really not i'm just being completely honest about it you know that i can't lie about something when i see it. when i see something i point it out as it is and i tell you straight up what i think of it and lulu's artwork is absolutely a godsend. It's a godsend, guys. This is... Wow. I mean, even his earliest artworks are genial. Look at this. It's all genius. I mean, look at this, though. This is a remarkably drawn, expertly executed Robotnik tribute. I mean, this Longjong Baldwin would be proud of this. Snooping is you, so I see. Thanks, Monson. God rest his soul. But anyway, let's just let's point out the facts. Even his oldest artwork is genial and pretty much, dare I say this, ahead of his time. Even in 2018 standards. I mean, look at this stuff. And, and this screenshot that he took of one of his characters on Second Life. That, that is just phenomenal. I bet the guy who made Second Life had a very unique vision of this. And I, and I know this because one of the friends that I used to know who was a, um, was a babysitter in, in the group home setting, he was part of the staff in what I used to live in in this group home setting before I moved in with my friends back when I did what I did you know he was an avid user of Second Life and this picture in of itself is a very clear depiction that Second Life is very much one of the most cinematic environments one can ever immerse oneself in now let me just say that now. And all these fan arts of Sonic the Hedgehog and his characters, and even some original characters at that. I mean, this guy, this guy, 
Lulu is an absolute genius. And keep in mind, he just turned 29 as of this recording, as of this airing, and this saving of this episode. So just please, if you would, keep that in mind. His first drawings were, of course, tradition. And let me, let me remind you, this is how I started out as an artist. I drew traditionally to start out. And this guy's original traditional drawings from way back in his early years, in his early months of his Fur Affinity account, his first submissions, even by today's standards, are truly remarkable just based on how meticulously they were drawn in general. Clearly this guy has spent a lifetime doing what he does because it shows in his art. And he does it absolutely amazingly well. I mean, you can't you can't ask for much more than that. You know what I'm saying? Just 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 look. Just look. Just look at this. Look at this. This is where the geniusness all began with his first deviations. And that, of course, as crazy as this sounds, led to his most recent works some 10 years later. Look at all that. Look at all that. This is, I'm telling you, this is remarkable. This is so, so And back while he was submitting his first deviations, we knew, we all knew how far he would go. And this, ten years later, is clear proof of that. Very evident proof of that. So Lulu, if you're watching this buddy, you're a great artist, man. You're great at what you do, and don't ever stop what you're doing, because you absolutely rock definitely rock the look when it comes to drawing stuff. Never stop drawing, buddy. Quick reminder. This episode of Reaching Out to the Unfamous has been brought to you by Dollar General, where for the right price, you can get exactly what you need and get the biggest bang out of your buck in the process. And by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is funded by people like you. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to stop! Wow! Somebody touch a moss baguette! 21st century cinema! Yes! Ah, shit. Guys, I want to help you out. I want to reach out to you. And if you don't like that, you can suck these nuts. And welcome to another episode of Reaching Out to the Unfamous. Let's look at some very talented artists today, shall we? First on the list, we have a guy named Philip So of South Korea. This guy has a very interesting character. His name is Count Billy. Of course, he has to have a count in his name because he's a serious regality. You know, he's very regal, very formal. Now, whereas Philip himself is Korean, his character Philip is German and thus serves as Philip So's own character and thus his alternate ego, so to speak. Which I think is actually very, very interesting to have an alter ego. I myself have an alternate ego which I am speaking as right now. But anyway, back to the story. The origins of his character go back quite a bit, back to around, I would say, the mid-2000s. I first started looking at his work around, I'd say, starting from a few months before I became an official DVR member, namely with, say, a picture like, say, this one. 
this was one of the first ones that I looked at, and this character's design is actually very interesting, very unique, very gifted. And so his artwork is very, very awesome, I should say. Very intriguing. Very, very intriguing, I should say. Very intriguing. So intriguing, in fact, that Philipso, not the character, but the person, has a very interesting taste in classical music, as do I. And I personally applaud him for that, because it shows in his artwork, and he's a very talented artist, although he never really considers himself to be one, but that he draws because it's something that he enjoys. And I very much like that. If he only does this as a hobby, imagine, my friends, what he would be capable of if he actually did this seriously. If he took drawing and art very seriously, how would you think his art would turn out? Would it be like something out of an anime, like Kill a Kill or something like that? By the way, go watch that anime, it's very, very interesting. Especially notable for several, for several characters, but you get the idea. Continuing with this artwork now, I've compiled a list of my favorite personal arts regarding this character, Philip, and I'd like to show that to you now. It's so intriguing to me when I think about it, because the drawings that he made of his character over the years has improved quite a bit. Of course, some of these characters might or might not have been drawn by himself, but rather as personal conditions. You know, I mean, I don't know that, but that's just my speculating. I can't assume, because as an old artist used to say, if you assume, you make an answer to you and me, which is completely another thing. Meanwhile, this character has undergone a very... By the way, this is... I don't know what to say about this because... Of course, many people are inspired by classical music, and that says a lot. Meanwhile, Philip So's character, Count Miller, is also very experienced in Taekwondo. Or Taekwondo, I should say. Forgive me for mispronouncing that. But I can tell just by the way this character has evolved over the years that he has a very unique style of his own in terms of fighting stance, which you can see very clearly on one of his submissions on his Affinity account. And he also has a DeviantArt account, as well as a blog of his own. You may already know his blog, and I'm not sure exactly where I found it originally, but if ever I need to link it to you, I will, and in fact I'll be more than glad to, following this video, the links of which, of course, you will find in the description, and also, mind you, this is just a sample of his work. Of course, he's also been known to draw automobiles, you know, sketches of automobiles, of helicopters, both of which I find just as fascinating and just as neatly well drawn. And therefore, that solidifies Philip So's very profitable ability as a hobbyist artist of some sort of light, and it's with that reason that I include him on the list of artists which I believe wholeheartedly you should check out, especially considering his art is well known in some places, and considering he's done this for a long, long time, I honestly believe that he has a lot 
of truth to his art, a lot of inspiration. So go check his stuff out. You may end up not ever wanting to leave because his art is that entertaining and that intriguing. It almost has some kind of a mystique to it. Aren't you? Anyhow, let's go to another artist I really like. This time from DeviantArt. Of course, I'm talking about the man who calls himself Cortafilus. I'm talking about Creation X Nihil Zero here. Has a distinct and very original array of different art styles and guises. As you look down his gallery, you will find very interesting artworks, some of which are traditional, some of which are digital, others which are abstract, in the most ironical ways, mind you. And his unique sense of perspective is also very distinct, very genuine, very clear cut, very well executed. I'm telling you people this because I know firsthand, because I'm looking at his artwork now, and I can only guess that that's probably why he is following me now on Twitter, because I noticed a couple of his artworks and I put them into one of my galleries dedicated to all artists resembling different walks of life and different talents, you know, basically the gifted. And there are gifted people who come from any creed, any country, any nationality, any walk of life in general. But as you look down this gallery, you will find that his artwork is very, very intriguing. Almost dreamlike, like something out of an illusion. Out of a computerized illusion. Especially for this digital work. Now, might I remind you all that this digital work stands out to me because it's very abstract, exponentially realistic in all its ironic glory. Of course, he also has some photographs too, which are also just as much noteworthy as the rest of his other stuff. And, of course, he experiments very well with YouTube colors, as you will see. He has unbelievable styles. And that, of course, dates back to his first artworks, which he submitted about a month or so ago when he first joined DeviantArt. And I must say, with absolute clarity and confidence, the extreme emotions and feelings and moods that he puts into his artwork in pretty much every submission that he accepts into his gallery, every folder that he has in his gallery particularly, they are all extremely unique in ways which not even myself can describe or accurately explain. Because ratio X I yield zero is most assuredly worthy of my praise and my admiration for having adopted so many different techniques, so many different art styles and genres, notably traditional, digital, abstract, and photography. And for that, ratio X yield zero, we here at Skull Media Enterprises thank you for having created this incredible gallery of art in which we, the viewing audience, are most privileged and honored to see you. By the way, go check his Deviant Talk out. Gracio X Nihil Zero at DeviantArt.com. You may also have a Twitter, which I may be able to link you to, following the video itself within its description, mind you. Next up, we have this is one of his works in particular, a very interesting work, I should say. It's called The Distortionist. 
And the reason why it's called the Distortionist is because of this woman here with this very odd looking baseball bat. I'm pretty sure this distorted bat that was drawn in this light was very intentional, supposedly to serve a purpose in this picture, and why the picture is called Distortion, or the Distortionists. That's what I have the second T in the end, or the third S, or whatever. The point is, the fact is pretty simple. This artist has a very gifted style. I look at literally thousands of different artworks every single day, and a lot of these, like this one, very well catch my eye, even if only for a few months. But those that particularly intrigue me are also those that I can very much relate to in very, very interesting ways and guises. And this artist, of course, will get to the rest of his gallery later, but this artist in particular has a very unique style all his own, and it is very well documented that his art has a very realistic feel to it, meaning it's genuine, it's original, in a very surprising way, and of course there's a description in this particular picture that reads, tears laced with cyanide flow through the crux of a mirror shuddered long ago, and sure, I'm the one who swung the metal bat but hey, I can't control the urge. Nobody's going to blame me for that. And with good reason. And this picture serves as a very, very clear-cut, crystallized example of that. Set in stone for all the world to see. And with that, I'd like to introduce you all to the rest of this gallery. And believe me, you're going to love his gallery because he has very interesting stuff in there that I believe is very noteworthy. There is the music on there. I think you might have heard that term in a recent commercial that was narrated by some animated owl in some kind of rich man's costume playing behind the piano there, but that's just one thing. As for this one, let's go to this gallery. A very privileged and very boss-like artist named Dora or Rendoya. She is a German artist last name Schmidt, whose deviations are unquestionably very intriguing in their own way, and also very mysterious, very dark in some places, very macabre, if you will. She, of course, is inspired by many things in life, as am I, and she's also inspired by the Renaissance and romantic eras of human history, which I can clearly see in quite a couple of her artworks. And just like me, she's a brony, except she's not a male, she's female. Technically on male, so that would make me a brony. But what would female bronies be called? Oh, I don't know. Well, I, you figured that out on your own, just look it up. Anyhow, judging by these particular artworks, and the ones that she considers to be inspirations to her, and of course she has a Facebook, and she encourages all of you, just as much as I do, to check out her artwork there, and her posts. And please, 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 for God's sake, give her a follow, because she deserves a hell of a lot more followers than I do. And I might have only 378 followers over there on Facebook, but honestly, I'm fine where I am. You can watch my Facebook if you want, that's your choice. 
I won't force you to, but anyway, looking at her artwork, noticing everything, and she also happened to have a code account of the username Nico Kaffee, which by the way may also have artworks that are just as good, but I don't know if that was deactivated or not. So, she's also a fan of chain mails, or chain comments or whatever. I stopped being a fan of that a long, long time ago, for reasons I won't discuss, but that's just me, that's how I am. And, um, the fact is, she, um, she is very intriguing as an artist, and I very much like her work. That being said, I'd like to direct you all on your attention, mind you, to her gallery, which I think you will very much enjoy. And by turds, I mean towards. You notice how I'm mispronouncing the words here. That's because I'm an autist, and there are lots of those around, so don't be surprised. <laughs> there are lots of noteworthy pieces here that I think you all very much enjoy. And personally, I like those particular drawings of hers. I think they are very unique, very, you know, they're authentic. They're authentic. And with damn good reason, mind you. Keep in mind that just because she is a woman doesn't automatically mean that she's not as gifted as any of her male counterparts because she is in fact and possibly much more so just so you know the more you know the better off you'll be the point is she's only made perhaps maybe several dozen works over the time in which she created this new account and now, but even though she doesn't have many artworks in her gallery, that doesn't mean that she's not consistent, because just in her artwork alone you can tell that her consistency drives her, because she spends quite a bit of time on these pieces I would imagine, a hell of a lot more time much more time than most will let on, and I can see that in her artwork, and I also notice here, look at this, look at this, her latest works for example, these are all very unique, they're quite interesting, you know, warrior, I mean, I can't even describe the words here, I'm just spellbound by these these compositions that she's bestowed upon the world. And I just don't know what to say about it, personally. I mean, all to that matters, but you get the picture. Right. Okay. I can see very clearly with my own two eyes that she has developed her own style even long before she made this account keep in mind she had a previous one but I can't say for sure whether or not it's still active because I have not checked it out myself but if ever you want to check it out just type her old username which you will see in her profile and then add to it in the web address .dvnaut.com and then press enter and of course you'll get your answer but going back to this topic you know the artwork that she's bestowed upon us it's kind of surreal very very surreal like something that you would see in some kind of a movie except all the movies in Hollywood are not like they should be presented in galleries like this one. Galleries like this are the reason as to why Hollywood should stop 
producing CG related over liberalistic garbage and stop promoting stuff that's more, say, less politically correct, more realistic, more back to reality, if you will. And at the same time, they can keep their CGI effects, their special effects or whatever, as long as they drop the political correctness of it. And of course, we have to have more artists like this, because, let me tell you, this woman's artwork is vastly incredible, and I urge you all to check it out. And, Rin Doria, I know that you might not be watching this now, when it airs on YouTube, but when you do get a chance to see it, you'll understand that I am totally impressed with your artwork and I think you have a very magnificent style that simply cannot be ignored by anybody. You have a very noticeable gallery and your art is absolutely outstanding. It is gold. And for that, we at Sco Media Enterprises thank you for your contributions. So, go check her artwork out. You will never be disappointed, I can tell you that. Reaching out to the young famous has been brought to you by Toby Atlas, who remind you all that having an adorable little girl from the Moonbox Studios movie Silent with the product itself playing the sound in the background is key for a noteworthy, realistic experience. And I'm talking about just the ears though, just, just visually, just sound. You understand? I mean, fuck. I'm not gonna this, but I, I just totally said that wrong. And it's also been sponsored by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, not sponsored, which is paid and bought for by suckers like you. Now, have a nice day. Well, that first season went down the toilet like a fucking ball of shit, didn't it? Man. Well, when I can't keep holding the socks in forever, but still, have a nice day. Goodbye. want my permission to download this video, message me on any of my social media channels and ask for it, and I'll give you my IK. Okay. And above all else, don't be a jackass, please, be real, don't steal. <laughs>